Hello all, Game Methuselah. Hope you're all doing well. It's uh, continuing to be interesting out there in our new role-playing world. I wanted to talk uh, briefly um, about a self-serving item here for myself. Well, it's not completely self-serving, just well, a little self-serving. I have a Patreon site, uh, patreon.com slash Game Methuselah. And um, I really like it. I mean, it was nice to be able to do something that would generate some economy and make me feel good and see that there were people out there who were interested in what I was doing. Because for me, that was sort of the, the deal. I, I don't have a lot of followers and, and I, of course, don't have a lot of patrons. But it's always nice to know there are a few people out there who are interested. And when I was building the hobby business back in the 90s, that was my interest. I wasn't looking to make money. I was looking to make the hobby bigger and better. And I think in some ways I succeeded. There are a lot of people out there who do different things. Things. And those who follow on YouTube and Twitter and all the others know that there are other people who are painting miniatures. And that got me thinking because this month on my Patreon.com Game Methuselah account, shameless plug, um, I couldn't figure out what I wanted to give away because every month I give away a painted figure and then some unpainted figures that are vintage to, okay, well, they're always vintage because that's pretty much what I have. And if it's modern, it's likely I bought it to you, so I'm not going to give it away. But some old stuff I'm always willing to put out there to help people build their collections. A lot of times I get people saying, you know, I, I want to build an old D&D Zero collection like you, but I'm just having it so hard to find miniatures. Well, it's because that many were not made back in the 70s. I mean, the market was a lot smaller than it is now and realize that most of the time it was kind of just us in the U.S., really the hobby built from here and expanded out into the world and now it's everywhere. So you're competing worldwide with all the people who want these same old miniatures that that, uh, that you want if you're building an old collection. But as I try to tell people, this is your good old days. We live in a real renaissance of gaming and it's very, very cool. So I think really to do is look at what's there now and utilize what you can, because now with the 3D printing and other things I'm seeing, there's so much more opening up and make it possible for you to get pretty much any miniature you want. And at that point, really the sky's the limit. It really is a matter of what you want to do. I'm just gonna paint two miniatures. Basically, I'm gonna tell people, look, whoever wins, you tell me what you want, and if it's not huge, or if I have it, or if it's something I can get, or if it's something you wanna send me, I'll paint it, I'll sign it, I'll send it back to you, and I'll more than likely do a video on it so that you can see it once again, how I paint and how I think about painting and you know try to expand and make your own painting better because that's my whole goal in teaching you painting is just for you to get better because I'm only gonna teach you up to a certain level. At that point, going to for a golden demon just means spending a lot more time doing what you'll already learn and know. There's so many good people out there teaching you how to paint and you should watch them and you should support them. And that's kind of my point. The thing I got in the mail really, really galvanized me to do this. This is Mike. He goes by the Goblins of Mordor. He's a miniature painter from Scotland and he puts out some nice work, normally Reaper Bones. Um, so I found him a couple years ago and jumped on, of course, so I could be on one of his little companions and he would paint me figures because even though I paint, and even though I have thousands of painted miniatures that I've painted, I still like other people's miniatures. And I think you get to a point where you realize there's only so much time in the world and you're only gonna be able to paint and do as much as you can. So it's good if you have the economy to be out there supporting people who are trying to build up something in their economy. I thought that was important for someone like Mike. Mike is trying to make a living as a professional painter, and he is working very hard and going more than uh, the extra mile. But there's so many others out there who are really fabulous painters. But there's a lot of people out there. There's um, two young ladies in England, I, I think they're both in England, who have tremendous painting skills, and they put out some beautiful figures. And they're really neat because they look entirely different from anything I would ever paint. Their choices of color palette, the way they paint them, their, their thinking, their presentation is very different than what I do and what a lot of other painters do. And that is what always appeals to me in miniature painting. My worry, of course, is always the same. Do they stay motivated? Do they stay fed? Is there enough money coming into these things to generally maintain... Um, the desire to keep doing it. It's like being a DM in role-playing games. I mean, 
it's not necessarily that you're ever paying the DM, because quite frankly, I would imagine for most of you, you're never paying the DM. The DM's doing it because he wants to do it. He puts out a lot of effort. He spends a lot of money. He paints a lot of figures or he does whatever he does to keep make the game good for you guys. And then he puts on the event for you. Now, you might buy him lunch, you may bring him a coffee, you know, maybe something like that. But I very seriously doubt in most cases there's any money changing hands for his services. So he has to stay motivated by the fact that you like what he's doing. You enjoy his hobby, you enjoy the game. And to that end, I always tell people, you know, be reliable. I mean, showing up is a huge thing. Showing up with a painted miniature, showing up with the player's handbook, showing up with a pencil and some dice. All these things show that you are actually interested in what he is doing. And that's important. If people are on YouTube and they're doing stuff that you like and you have an economy, and if you don't, of course, do not, you know, send them a dollar, send them two dollars, send them whatever you're, you can afford. And if nothing else, it just lets them know that there are people out there who appreciate the fact that they're putting out content and that they're doing something that is a benefit to them. Because at some point, if they don't, you know, even myself, who does this because I love just to get information out, and I just love to talk about the hobby. If no one's listening, it's kind of pointless for me to do videos. But I have enough people, I think, that are listening, enough people that are watching, that at least justifies me getting up and talking to you all the time. But from a strictly mercenary point of view, why I suggest you go online and find miniature painters that paint it like and buy figures. People are looking at my collections and they're like, oh my God, this is awesome. And the figures I painted in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and it, it's gone on until, well, you know, this week. Um, they are selling you art, real art. Art that will, in many cases, most likely outlast you. So you are producing and gathering and collecting things that will be what represents the hobby in the future. What people will look at to try to understand what was this fascination with fantasy and mythology and, and heroism and, and all the things that go on in both role-playing and fantasy gamings, but in many ways in all gamings. Now, there's computer games, there's all kinds of information that will be out there, but nothing survives as well as art. And for those of you who have an economy, I think you can find artists like I found Larry Watt and a lot of these people that I got to paint miniatures for me decades ago because I needed more miniatures and I couldn't paint goblins fast enough for my Warhammer Fantasy armies or undeads or whatever it was. And I would hire these guys and I would, you know, I remember Larry one day because he was looking for money. He says, yeah, I'll paint some miniatures for you. What would you like? And I said, I tell you what, I need orcs and goblins, anything up to 100 pieces. He was charging me $5 a piece for a foot figure and $8 for a mounted figure. And he supplied the figure and the flocking and obviously the paint. And his quality was really excellent. Uh, he came from the Tim Finkus school. He painted like him. He, he took it and then he took that style and added his own quantity and quality onto it and made really excellent figures. And now I still have them. And, you know, I look at them now and I think I could more than likely put these on the market and get $30, $40 a piece you know, for figures I paid five bucks for, you know, and in the meantime, I've had them to enjoy. I told this to a friend of mine who wanted to get into miniature gaming, you know, board game, you know, large miniature gaming, like World War II armor. And he said, ah, but I don't paint. I said, you don't need to paint. Go buy an army. You know, this used to be a thing even really before eBay became big. You would go to the big game conventions and some guy who would play the game and he's tired of it now. He put out his army for sale and you could pick up an army for a couple hundred bucks. Now, that's usually pretty close to miniature cost, what we used to call lead cost, and that's it. So you play for five years, you enjoy the game, you have a great time. At some point, you're saying, yeah, okay, I'm done with this. You put it back up on the market, and you sell it for 100 bucks more than you paid for it, and you got five years of playing with it. I mean, seems like a good return on investment to me. And that's what I wanted to tell you. There are some fabulous, 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 fabulous painters out there. I'd like to talk about names and maybe I will down the line, but I, I know I'll miss someone and I'll make me feel bad. The only person obviously that I, I mentioned with Mike Mordor is that somebody I regularly follow. But I think if you go on there, you can find these. Even the greatest painters collect. I collect, Matt collects, my friend Don collects. We have thousands of figures and we still buy more. And that is the thing and the people I think you should look at to support. I know you all have limited funding. If you've got money and you want miniatures, buy them. Buy them because they're going to be awesome. 
buy them because they're going to be totally unusual. Or in the case of the ones I just got from Mike, they're from a, a company called Kraken Ship. I had never heard of these people. So I looked them up. It was a Kickstarter, but they're producing beautiful figures, really interesting looking that I haven't seen before. These little guardians of the woods fit right into my Albion campaign, which is, I think, why Mike sent them to me. And they're going to be perfect for my game when I run Albion again. And that's what I like. So I'll just flip some Magnus on them and they're in my collection and they blend right in. It's something that's important both Two, to keep people motivated and to keep them well fed. And more importantly, to let them know that you're out there and you're interested. And from your end, get something from it that is going to be of value to you. I think nothing is going to be more valuable for the hobby than the painted miniatures. Rule systems come and go. I mean, as long as I've been gaming, I've played, as you guys more likely know, more than 20 different fantasy role-playing systems. Science fiction, Cthulhu, Old West fantasy. There's a bunch of things you can play, and I have done so. And the game comes, and uh, maybe I lose interest, or some new shiny pretty comes out, and I jump into that. Um, but the miniatures are still here, and I still have them. This weekend, we're going to go up and play Star Wars uh, Fantasy, a well, Star Wars role-playing game. And this is an old kickback from uh, maybe two decades ago. And I have a whole collection of miniatures, of Star Wars figures I painted back then that have been with me and sitting in my box, patiently waiting for whatever, 20 years for an opportunity to get back out and wield their lightsabers and shoot their blasters. And now we're going to do it. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm putting my, my Star Wars miniatures in their own little unique Star Wars box now and we'll be off to play. And that will be a fun thing to do. And that's what I want. You know, I mean, we're in a time now where the hobby, I would say, is not in flux, but it's at risk because you can't get out there and do all the things you'd like to do. And I worry that when all of this comes to some hopefully fruition that is positive, um, we're not going to be looking at stores that are gone. And I fear that will happen and there will be less out there. And so the hobby will get smaller to some extent. But it's all up to you because this medium here is totally controlled by you. It's not being done and guessed by people sitting in ivory towers. Uh, success and failure determines whether you like it and you support it. Matt Colville, I mean, he bashed around in this hobby for a long time, not making any real money. I remember driving his beat up old car, going to his his uh, his game businesses to to do the things he was designing for really nice games, but you know they weren't appreciated. And now that he can be appreciated, he can do more, and he can well he can live a little nicer. So I think that's the thing to think about. I don't really want to get out there and talk more than this about it, but there are lots out there. First and foremost, like I said, look at the miniature painters. Look to see if this would be beneficial to you, and obviously can't something you can afford because. Cost of miniatures now are expensive. Even if you 3D print them or whatever, it looks like you're still paying four or five dollars. If you're buying metal, you're paying up to ten dollars or more. You know, a lot of times you can pick up painted miniatures, especially if you troll the internet like I do on eBay and SD and all the others, where their people are putting up stuff. Yeah, hey, you know, you want to look at a sale that's ending on Wednesday, and you're gonna find some collection of miniatures that maybe aren't perfect, but they're cheaper than you'd pay for them unpainted. And now you've got more stuff to add to your game for this Friday. Now not having to wait and paint it yourself. It's a good thing to think about. Um, again, like I said, I, I know this is more just of a self-serving video to just have you aware of what you're doing out there in Patreon, but realize that even the smallest and tiniest amount of support is really beneficial. I mean, I follow people like Puffin Forest and the History Guy and, of course, the Mats, but, you know, I really, really, really support, like, someone like Mike Mordor or the Goblins of Mordor because he needs the support. And more importantly for me, he needs the motivation to keep working. And that's what I want to see. These other painters, I feel, I think, feel the same way. So go find someone out there who's getting started and needs some help and, and support them. And make sure that they know you're you're there thinking about it and that you like their, their product and the like. And, and I think as that happens, things will grow and more things will become available. So until we speak again, fight me, devil's fight, for I hate peace. Game on.